Hello and welcome. April Cox here with Self-Publishing Made Simple, where we help new and aspiring authors go from manuscript to self-published book and beyond. Today, we have a very special event for you, a workshop with one of my favorite speakers, A.G. Billig. We're going to talk about how to boost sales with traditional media and PR. Let's get started. Let me introduce you to A.G. Billig. She is a best-selling published author of fiction and nonfiction books, self-publishing expert, coach, and presenter, a book shepherd, and founder of Self-Publishing Mastery. She's a former radio and TV host, editor-in-chief for Glossy Magazines, and PR and branding expert. She uses her experience and expertise to help authors get clear about their writing goals, build their author brand and platform and become successful. She is also a sought after speaker at writers conferences and workshops, just like this one. So please join me in welcoming A.G. Billig. Yay. So happy to have you today. Happy to be here. Thank you so much for uh, having me. This is actually the, my second time in your group, but I'm, I'm, I'm excited to talk today about this topic because I think there are several ways to go around. And thank you for the warm presentation, of course. And thank you, everybody, for joining us today. There are two key, key components to, to your success as authors. If your goal is to, to build a career and become a full-time author, like the already famous Mark Dawson from the UK, who's making one million dollar a year with his ebooks so this is something that's possible and i think it's all right to think that you know we want to reach readers we want to make money because actually the fact that an author makes money with their books shows that readers enjoy their writing so basically that's a proof that you reach so many people with with what you do and you can make a difference in the world whether you entertain them or you give them food for thought so Without any much further ado, let me share the screen here so you can see the presentation I prepared. There are two key ingredients for you to build your career as a full-time author. One is productivity. So you need to write a lot of books. People who are successful, who are able to make a full-time living with their books, usually have a back catalog of six to seven books. And some people achieve that in a year. So that's one thing. And of course, the other thing is... You need to have readers, right? Because you can have all these books, but if you don't have the readers, <laughs> then it's of no use, right? So that's one of the aspects where people have a hard time. Like, how do I build my audience? How do I find these readers? And especially when you're starting out, everybody's saying, okay, you need a website, you need to your social media channels, all that stuff. But to build that following takes time. So one way to kind of one shortcut to build your following and to draw in all, all of these readers who would read your books is to use media relations and PR. And media relations actually is a tool used by PR agencies to build awareness for brands, to establish this connection between a brand and the consumer. And in your case, you know, whether you want it or not, you are a brand as an author and your book the moment you put it out there on Amazon or any other platform for sale, it becomes a product. And like any product, the book needs to have a nice cover. It has to have a really good sales blurb that draws people in. It has to be properly edited. So that product needs to be really good. So catch the train means that, you know, basically you use this media relations to get to your potential reader faster and reach those readers, you don't have them right now, by tapping into a building audience, which these media outlets have. Because of that, it will get you to your destination faster. That's the idea. So PR is a sort of a science. It was, for those of you who are unfamiliar, it was created in the early 90s. Edward Bernays came up with this idea of, okay, let's find a way, as I said, to build rapport between a brand and the consumer. And with PR, basically, 
not only you get this awareness for your books, but you also build trust because with advertisement, we all know advertisement is paid. And I don't know about you, but sometimes, you know, I am reluctant because I know that people, they are not ethical all the times and they are going to say whatever is necessary to make me buy their product and it's paid. So, but with PR, it's actually something that it's free. And because people still trust the media, it gives you also a seal of approval and it gives you also like more credibility because basically when a journalist writes about your book or interviews you, people will believe, and which is also true that they do it because they appreciate your work, they appreciate you. So it's also a, a sort of endorsement. So PR gets you this free traditional media exposure because you don't have to pay for it like you do with advertisement. It helps build a brand. It increases awareness and visibility. It's also cost efficient. And usually it's more than out of the box. I mean, you need to find like creative ways to get it and to get the result you want. In PR agencies, the specialists, the experts work with traditional owned media. Well, we all know now that there are People are kind of, you know, mm, should I trust traditional media or not? But I think if we put politics, uh, you know, like news aside, I think there are still people who are uh, consuming traditional media when it comes to, you know, arts, lifestyle, all that stuff is still working. And then when I uh, say traditional media, also, you know, I have a broader view. I mean, it also means a podcast that is not necessarily run by one of the big companies. So there are many podcasts out there. I would include that with traditional media or with media. And uh, here in the U.S., there are many, many people right now listening to podcasts. Maybe you are too. So compared to social media, which is owned by you, you're the author. You can put there whatever you want. This kind of media, traditional own media, and even, a, you know, somebody podcast has a gatekeeper. So in order to be featured there, somebody needs to approve you sort of like think that, oh, this person is interesting. The content this person is providing is interesting. So I'm willing to give it airtime. I'm willing to give this person space on my website or in my newspaper magazine and talk about this person or what they do. And that's because, you know, there is this gatekeeper, same as with traditional publishing, right? There is a gatekeeper there. There is someone, the literary agent first, who needs to believe in your book and take you on. And then there are the editors, at the, the editorial managers at uh, traditional publishers. They are the gatekeepers. So that's why also traditional publishing has this aura of, oh, this is so cool to be traditional published because my book has been vetted by someone. And with this kind of own media, which is not yours, basically somebody vets you and says, yeah, this is cool. Uh, we need to talk about this and people will follow that. But as you can see, you know, not that a, a first time author, unless is someone really, really famous, will get on a Morning America show. But just to, you know, to explain further that concept that this media outlets, they have a built-in audience. Imagine that you get on a show and then your book suddenly gets in front of 4 million people. How much money should you spend on advertising to, to get that? So I'm not saying that doing this is easy because actually it's a whole skill set that you need to learn and it's not going to happen over time. You need to give yourself time. But it is possible. And once you do it, the advantage of doing yourself instead of hiring a publicist is that you're going to build your own relationship with this journalist. And especially now I'm talking about a long term writing career. This is going to serve your entire career. And even though these people, you know, they may switch from one publication to another, one radio station to another, they might start a new podcast, you will always be kind of their friend, their connection. So to be able to do this by on your own, you will need a toolbox. And this is the toolbox I used when I was working as a PR expert with an advertising agency, which had a PR department. And that this is the toolbox that book publicists usually use. So a book publicist 
when they take on a client, they are going to look at the client, they are going to look at their book genres, they are going to look at their author brand, if there is one, if not, they're going to suggest to build your author brand, and then they're going to have an action plan. And they're going to look at you, your story as an author, they're going to look at your books, and they're going to see, okay, what kind of added value can I give to my channel. So the, all these media outlets, they are channels for you to communicate with your readers. So what they want to do is give information to their audience, entertain. They want to do things that will draw people in. So when you put on your head, like your PR expert head, you have to see, okay, I need to add value. I need to make myself interesting. And to do that, you have to research and you have to prepare. And you also need to start because you're, you know, you're new. So you don't have like a, an Excel sheet full with names, journalist names and contacts. So this is something that you need to build your media tribe. And then once you start to be featured in the media, then you can scale. Actually, it says optimization, but you can actually scale. And I actually, I do have, and I, I talked to April a little bit about this. I do have a media mastermind group. It's a four-week group that starts in June. And I go in more detail about each one of these tools because we don't really have that much time to them. So let's start with tool number one, which is an action plan. Like in everything, you know, even if you, you know, if you're planning your book series, it's good to have an action plan, right? It's good for you to know, okay, how many books do I want to really? this year is it going to be a rapid release am i going to release a book every three months every every month so you need to know that so you can plan right the writing the editing all that stuff having the cover ready it is the same with you know starting doing pr for yourself you need to have this action plan so there are a few questions what do i want to communicate especially for authors who are new who are not celebrities saying to some to a journalist or you know a podcaster that oh you know my name is AG Billig and I'm releasing a new book nobody will be interested but you know if I write a book about how to cope with fear or how to you know like if it's something timely for nonfiction, then I can tap into the topic of my book and I can pitch that to the media. I'm an expert who can talk about fear coping mechanisms, you know, in challenging times. If you write fiction, if it's historical fiction, obviously you've done a lot of research, let's say Regency, right? So you can find media outlets that are interested in, you know, like history podcasts, history sections, columns in Lifestyle Magazine that are interested in history magazines. And then you can talk about your research, what you find out about Regency, and then tie in your book and say, hey, then if you want to learn more or, you know, I have this novel that happens during Regency. So there is always, even with fiction books, you know, there is something that, that you can find in there to talk about, add value to that listener or reader and tie in your book. That's what we did, you know, with PR. And then, you know, communicate, that's part of your action plan. And when do you communicate? When do you communicate refers to exactly what I mentioned earlier. What is your release plan for the, you know, for the year or for at least for the next six months? Because, you know, the way the Amazon algorithm works, and I mentioned Amazon because I know this is, you know, the big place where all of us get the sales. We want to have a, like a big, usually we have a big spike in sales during the release date to trigger the algorithm to get higher, higher in, in the charts. But then what we want to see is also like steady sales, you know, not have a like high, like a spike in sales and then zero. So a book, just remember, is evergreen. So you can always go and promote your book. But based on your release schedule, you know, you can also plan your PR activities to make sure that you get more visibility during your book launch time. And then to make sure that you keep yourself in the news, so to speak, so that there are always new people coming to your book because that's what you need. Even after your fans buy your book, you will, to get those sales steady, you'll have to have new people coming in and 
learn about your book. And that's where you, these media appearances can help you. You can work with a one year action plan again if you have your, you know, if you have your editorial calendar in place, maybe a six month action plan would be better to start with. And the first step is to define your communication objectives. So what is your goal? Where are you in your career right now? So depending where you are on your in your career right now, you can define, you know, what you'd like. You're building your brand. So you need to build this awareness but you also you need to build this emotional connection and with trust with your potential readers so that's what you're going to focus on or you know you're already starting out let's say you have 2000 people on your mailing list already but you you need more fans so to get more fans you need to get more exposure and that's where you know you being interviewed on a radio show on a podcast or doing an interview in a magazine can get you in front of people who might be your potential readers. Very, very important. And this is one of my favorite things, even during the mastermind, is the defining the core messages and the talking points. And I can tell you this helps you not only with your uh, media appearances, but it can help you with your social media too. Because when you get clear what you know about your talking points, then it is easy to keep all your communication consistent and constantly give added value to your readers. So what is it that you want that the audience should know about you and your books? What are you an expert in if you're a nonfiction author? As I said, even if you're a fiction author, depending on the genre you're writing in, you know, you can be an expert in a, like a certain historical time. Or if you did research, let's say you write a book that's set up in Florence, Italy. So already you know more about that place since you did your research than somebody who, you know, has no clue. Even if you write science fiction or, you know, you create a a whole new world and you can talk about, especially now, you know, there is talk about artificial intelligence blending in with humans. So you can find something that's timely and you can talk about. And very, very important, define your target audience because this is something you need to do for your own books. But when you know who your target audience is, their demographics, then you kind of know that where they are, not only on social media, we all know that a younger audience is now on Instagram and uh, on TikTok. And I keep seeing success stories about authors who are on TikTok and they see a spike in sales just for being on TikTok. But not all book genres are doing well there. So again, that's why it is important to know your which your target audience is. And then once you know that, then you can figure out, okay, so this is my target audience. What kind of podcasts do they people listen to? What kind of content are they interested in? Would my target audience ever pick up a newspaper if they wouldn't then you know (laughs) there's no point in pursuing being featured in a newspaper but maybe they read Cosmo you know maybe they read Glossy Magazine so once you define the target audience so you have the answers to these three different set of questions then you can go on and build your media tribe and see okay this is my target audience what would be the most appropriate media channel for my audience. And before that, I already touched on that. So what are the major events in my writing career in the next six months, next year? And to help you once you know, once you start approaching the journalist, it's always a good idea to be ready. So you should have an author bio. And by the way, the bio, I've seen all kinds of bios. Some bios say, okay, I was born in 1978. Uh, I attended that high school. That's not important. The bio, your author bio should read as well as your novel or your story is the place where you shine, a, you know, you put yourself in the best light. It should mention, you know, of course, your name, the genre you're writing in. And if there is anything, you know, in your past, let's say, um, for example, CJ Lyons, 
I heard about her when I went to the London Book Fair a few years ago. Um, and she writes thrillers. She's a doctor and her thrillers are set up in a you know medical environment. So in her situation, it makes sense to mention in her bio that she's a doctor because that informs her writing. But pay attention when you write your bio because that's an important piece of your brand. And then book description, headshot, the book cover. And then, yes, you can also include a press release where, you know, you can write about your book, a very short, like the sales blurb can be included in the press release and also the target audience. This gets us to tool number two, which is building your media tribe. And building your media tribe is all about making new professional connections and basically turning journalists into your allies. And to do that, you have to become their ally by providing that extra value, that content that would make their life easier by providing their audience with interesting content, interesting stories. So it all starts with identifying the right media channels for you based on your target audience and what they would probably consume in terms of media. Some people like podcasts, so go for podcasts, you know. And it's always a good idea to start from, you know, small local, so the media outlets in your you know, in your in your city, in your county. And from there, once you develop as an author, once your career grows, then you can, you know, try to reach to bigger media outlets. And the other thing is that usually the national networks, national outlets, they look at the regional one, local one. And if there is an interesting story in there, they will pick it up. So once you have these media channels, and as I said, even uh, let's say there is a glossy magazine or, uh, you know, a newspaper, and they have different columns when you look at them, history, lifestyle, travel. So maybe, again, depending on your book, you can target when you reach out the journalist in charge of travel or history. Again, if that applies. Next step is to build your media list. When I started out was to just go online, go online, go on the internet. I'm in Orange County. So I typed in media outlets in Orange County. And you can do depending where you are, you know, you type in media outlets in New York or wherever you are. And then you will see a list popping up and then you can go through each and I found newspapers, magazines, TV stations. And then you go through each and then you will see a website. And then you go through each website. That's why I said, you know, it takes time. So it won't happen overnight. But if you're committed to it, then it's going to be really rewarding. And then you look and you see, you know, they, they have phone numbers, usually the office phone numbers, they have emails. So you go in there and you, and you see who is the person in charge of, arts and culture, books, travel, history, whatever you think it's good for you. And you create an Excel sheet or whatever you think it works best for you with all that information, the name of the person, the name of the media outlet, an office phone number, an email address. So you start putting that together and look for journalists who are interested in your messages and in topics related to your books. So this is one way to do it. Then, you know, the indie community is pretty tied together and people communicate and they share information. So if you have friends who write in a similar genre, who have already been interviewed, you can ask them to recommend you. And also you can look at successful authors in your genre who is interviewing them, where they are featured, because those people, those media outlets might be interested in what you have to say and also see what those people are talking about. And another opportunity is, especially now that things are opening up and events, in-person events are returning, when you go to events, conferences, trade show, book launch events, networking events, look for these media people, which you can connect with. So for example, you know, there is the Conscious Life Expo here in LA. There are always media people around. So for someone who has a book on, you know, personal growth, spirituality, if they are there at such an event, you know, they can go and when they see a journalist, they can introduce themselves, give them a, you know, a, a card, give them a book. And that's how you start engaging with them. And of course, it's always ideal. It's different when you meet someone in person, then you just send a call email. But I can tell you, if you do it 
properly and you know if you do it with an open heart and with the intention to serve them help them you might get a, a really positive answer i already mentioned that so four steps to building your idealist do your research put all the results in a spreadsheet and they can move to one media outlet they can change media outlets but it's always good to once you start this media list it's always good to keep it up to date and always you know you can decide okay this Maybe, you know, once a month, I want to add five more people to my media list. I want to, you know, to do more research. So set up a time for you to to do this. So, yeah, I was stuck on California. I was at the writer's conference there. So I just typed in media outlets in Stockton, California. So that's what I got, you see. And then you, if you click on those links, they will take you to the website. So this is Caravan. And here you have the contact us page and you have these details. And also, it's always a good idea to have a press release out when you have an important event, like releasing a book or doing a, you know, a book signing. And there are free distribution platforms for your press releases, like these three websites. And then... Maybe somebody sees it, you know, like a journalist sees that and uh, they might pick it up or be interested in you and contact you. Like everything else in life, it is really important to have the right mindset. So don't be afraid to reach out to them because they are people just like you. They work uh, around the clock and there is a lot of pressure for them to you know find content that is exciting for their audience so when somebody reaches out to them and says okay I have this and this is something really that can be interesting for them they will be really really grateful so try to put yourself in their shoes and of course keeping your goal in mind which is okay i want to be featured i want to be a guest on this podcast but think okay how can my participating into this show how can me being on this show can help them what is the contribution in terms of information entertainment whatever i can make and also mention my book i have an exciting story to tell you know, some people will say, no, like a literary agent. Maybe those of you who queried literary agents and God knows are familiar with that. I know an author who queried a hundred literary agents until she got her yes. And now she's going to sign her second book at Barnes & Noble in LA this upcoming weekend. So it paid to have a hundred no's before she got her yes. So it's the same with them, you know, not everybody will respond, not everybody will say yes. But if you're patient and persistent, you will get your first yes. And once you get your first yes, yes, I want to interview you. Yes, I want to feature you. Then, you know, you will gain the confidence and you will get more yeses after that. When you approach a journalist, a podcaster, everyone who is a media person even if you have that excel right and let's say you have 20 people on your spreadsheet don't send bulk emails you know sometimes i see that people send bulk emails and then they have everyone in the two sections and i can see it's been sent to 20 people now i want something as a journalist that's been sent to me so even if you have the same copy you know the same in the email text just put it in separate emails and say dear john uh, i've been listening to your podcast for two months and it's really interesting and this is how i think i can contribute i have this information and i'm also an author and i let's talk if you're interested i can give you more details so make it personal show them that you are not there to just to you know get on the show show them that you're there to you know make a contribution and also that you're familiar with their work even with this media outlets you can that list phone their office phone you can pick up the phone and call and ask to be to talk to that person also it's important to know that different types of media outlets work with different time frames so for example on a really popular podcast you might be booked six months in advance so that's why it is important to know your editorial calendar so when you're going to release the book so you can be able to book your interviews or your media appearances ahead of time so that you make sure that you know when you're having your big release then everybody uh, learns about it knows about it 
you need to be prepared. So have your media kit. I already mentioned that before you start pitching the, the journalist. Show them that you're a good fit for whatever you're pitching, radio show column or TV audience. Be courteous and polite. Ask them when and how it's a good time to contact them. Follow up on your email. So let's say you send an email on Tuesday. By the way, Tuesdays, Wednesday, Thursday are the best days to send up emails. Don't do it on a Monday or a Friday. But let's say you send an email and you don't get a reply. You can follow up next week and, you know, see what's going on before you give up on that lead. And once they feature you, make sure you you send them a thank you note because many people, they forget after it happened, like, okay, it's done. I don't need you anymore. But yes, you're going to need these people again and again because, you know, you're going to have more books out. Avoid to be uh, pushy or vague. Allow them time for response. That ties into what I said earlier. It is important to target media channels and also columns that are kind of connected to your book topping to what you write about so don't send information about your books to people who write about you know soccer games or stuff like that it's not going to work and always give them time i mean it's always for your book launch it's always good to plan three months in advance so don't send out a press release or any information the day before your book release and expect journalists to run it the second the next day because it's not going to happen tool number three added value i mentioned that already so the added value is actually giving them a great reason for them to feature you because again they are not your advertiser they have no obligation to say hey this is a great author and he or she is releasing a new book and yeah i need to tell you about that no that's why you know like with pr you have to be a little bit more subtle so your added value is either informing is either entertaining is either educating like giving people you know, food for their heart, food for their soul. So it would be like, you think in terms of breaking news, maybe there is something totally new and fresh and that it's a breaking news, it's breaking news. Or nonfiction books, again, you're an expert at something. Your topic is timely. The red balloon, you're something in your book in what you're talking about, something completely out of the box, unseen, unheard before. This is something uh, the media is looking for. And yeah, you have to find the right angle for your story. That That's the added value, you know. This is an example. So Sarah Winokur, she's been uh, represented by Black Shuttle Enterprises. This is a book marketing company here in LA I work with. And she released Double Blind, the Icelandic Manuscript of Murders in 2020. And, you know, when the whole coronavirus started. So she, not only she writes this noir crime thriller set in Iceland, but she's also an expert geneticist. And her book is also, you know, built around DNA and high tech world. So that was a really timely topic. And I can tell you, she got so many interviews and she's doing really well. And this is her only book, but, you know, just from the sales, the money she spent on publicity, she got back because she didn't go to the journalist saying, hey, I got a new book. No, she we position her as this expert geneticist who can talk about DNA and she can also speak about Iceland. And Iceland was one of the few countries where the Americans could actually travel during that time. So we use that and she got on shows to talk about Iceland. So we use that, you know, to get her media exposure. A press release can be used to add value. If you make it fresh and news worthy, then, you know, it can get you on shows. And here you have a sample press release and it shows, you know, the headline always need to be grabbing and catchy. The subheading also, needs to be give more detail and more detail compared to the headline but also be grabbing and also the first paragraph is usually the one that grabs the attention and so all the important information needs to go into the first paragraph endorsements are another way to do it so this guy Dragos Bradashanu wrote this book 
And because he's friends with Greg Braden, actually Greg Braden was featured on his documentary, he got an endorsement. So all of a sudden, when, you know, I see this book, I said, oh, this is endorsed by Greg Braden. This is interesting. So yeah, let's give this guy a chance. And then, you know, public speaking, when you do that, it makes you look knowledgeable and inspirational. Another way to add value and to increase your chances to be featured is to create events that are memorable, unique, and newsworthy. Now I'm going to tell you a little bit about my own book launch, which I did for my short story collection, Four Doors and Other Stories. I didn't want to have just a book signing. I wanted to do something that's out of the box. So something that would be interesting, not only for the audience, but also for the media. So what I did, I rewrote one of the short stories as a monologue, and then I took acting classes to be able to perform that monologue. I wrote on stage tango dancers. You can see them in the right picture. An accordion player. We had video projections. So everything turned into a performance, actually, a 40-minute performance, like a mini show with professional lights, professional sound. This is Fernando, the accordion player, with a little setup. So that resulted in three interviews that were aired on major TV stations. We had a sponsor who uh, supported us financially and also with promotion. So 150 copies of the book were sold, 200 attendees. And 20 of them were journalists. And then, you know, social media, I saw an increase in number of followers on Facebook and then 20 stories in national media. So we had TV stations, glossy magazines, radio stations there. And they all talked about the event just because it was something that was completely out of the box. You know, it would have been like a regular book signing. This wouldn't have happened. So you can create this kind of event, a book launch event, and make it so interesting that people can't resist it. And then you can get a media partner, which will help you with publicity so that there is a lot you can do about it. But as I said, this is something that I cover in depth in my master media training. Research and preparation has to do with you not only getting familiar with those media outlets and doing your network, but always putting your best foot forward. So it has to do with what you do before you get in front of a microphone and in front of the camera. And now that the video content is king, even on your social media platforms, you know, people love videos, people love TikTok, as I said earlier, they love reels on Instagram, they love stories on Instagram, they love lives on Instagram, Facebook, the same. So these are principles that you can apply for your social media appearances as well. In my opinion, every appearance where you put yourself in front of the people, whether it's a in-person one or an, an online one, but where you're not sharing that video of you or your that audio file with, of you just with your family and friends, that's a public appearance. Everybody can see you. So what are your goals? What do you want to achieve? What are the messages you want to convey? And with this, you go back to your talking points and to your branding. What is the mandatory information you want to convey regardless of the host questions? Usually journalists have the best interest at heart when they have a guest. Sometimes, of course, they, they need controversy and they are going to ask questions that put the guest in a best light, but also, you know, give them the answer they want. And sometimes they might not ask you the questions you want to answer to, but there is always a way to convey the information you want to, regardless of those questions. And the more you, you know, you're familiar with that, especially for a radio, for a, for an audio or video appearances, especially now that most podcasts, they also have the video version. So you will be on camera, although it's a podcast. If you get familiar with the host presentation style, you know what to expect. You know, maybe there is a person that likes to make jokes, you know, and their style is a little bit quirky. So you won't be caught off guard when that happens. You know what to expect. And by also by getting familiar with that, you know, you can think of a list of potential questions that they might ask and prepare clever answers. Always have handy a note with the names of your social media channels and places where people can go and buy your books and follow you. You know, you can rehearse before you are on a show. You need to train your voice before you speak, especially if you're going to 
to be interviewed for half an hour or longer, make sure your voice can do that. You know, sometimes if you talk a lot, a lot, a lot, then it can strain your vocal cords. With written interviews, again, the same questions. Why am I doing this interview? What is my goal? Because that informs your answers. And usually with written interviews, now it's very rare nowadays to meet with you in person. They would usually send you questions, email you questions, and then they will say, okay, I, I need the answers in about a week. So make sure you respect that deadline. And tool number, number five, scaling. <laughs> Let everybody know how much the media loves you. It's always a good idea to have on your website, you know, a dedicated page that says in the media or media appearances. And as you start having these media appearances, you can list them there. And then you can repurpose them into content for your social media, uh, sound bites, short videos, pictures, blog posts, and you can use them as endorsements, you know, in your future pitches, in your author bio and book descriptions. So for example, let's say you pitch a new media outlet, you can say, okay, I've been already featured there and there, there, interviewed there, there, and there. And then if you have this page on your website, you can include a link and see, you know, this is what I've done so far. This is how I look. This is what I can talk about. So the keys to success because you can do it, are planning and preparation. Know what you want to communicate, when and to whom. And, you know, by doing it again and again and again, you can only get better. Like everything else in life, building long-lasting relationships is a plus. So don't look at these people, you know, just as some people who can offer you a favor or help you is look at them as people with whom you know you can grow together with so allow those relationships to flourish and grow over time provide value so don't show up as someone who's like oh, okay i need you i need you to do this for me no i'm sending you this email because i have something valuable to give to you and to your audience so I'm here to help you. As I said, be consistent with your media appearances. Even if you're, you know, you released your book, just make sure, because again, books are evergreen, make sure that you kind of stay in the limelight. So you are doing, a, you know, maybe a podcast a month after your book release. Maybe you're doing an interview in a magazine once a month. You're always doing something. You never go under the radar. And then you know, when you have something major going on, then you, you know, you, you blow this up and then you do more than you would normally do. I'll wrap it up here. So if you are willing to and interested in diving deeper into this topic and working together in a small group of people, like 15 people and work on our talking points and on your, you know, getting you ready for media appearances, public appearances and figuring out how, what are the best media channels for you and working on your author bio. So creating all this package for you, let me know. I want to thank you for today, for being here. Uh, I know it's a lot to take in. That's why we need more time together. The Mastermind starts in June and it's a month. We'll meet once a week live and then we'll have interactions in our Facebook group. And the cost is $149. But if you send me an email today saying that you want to join, you will get 10% off. And I'll send you the details. So you will see the curriculum and uh, you'll get all the details. And I will definitely be attending this one. So join me if you want to join me. So there's at least 14 seats left. I'm going to send yeah, this email yeah. as soon as we hang up. <laughs> Thank you so much for this wealth of information you've been providing. You are still one of my favorites to go to. And I can't wait to talk to you about some of the things that I'm thinking for my oh. own business because I need your genius in my life. So Thank, you. Thank you again. And everybody have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you too. Bye.